Today we are talking about meiosis, meiotic cell division. Meiosis is a special cell division which only occurs in the time of formation of gametes, that is male gametes or female gametes. So this is the male reproductive organs. Inside the testes, there are seminiferous tubules. Inside the seminiferous tubules, there are the cells, epithelial cells. These cells goes through meiosis cell division and forms the male gametes, the sperms. During this formation of the male gamete or the sperm, the cell division which occurs is the meiosis. And also inside the female reproductive organs, inside the ovary wall, there are epithelial cells. In case of formation of the female gametes, the ovums, the cell division which occurs is also the meiosis. Inside the ovary walls, the epithelial cells which is going through the cell division meiosis and forming the female gamete ovum. Meiosis plays a vital role in conserving the number of chromosomes in a species. If meiosis was not there, if it was only the mitosis cell division, then the sperms and ovums will also have the same number of chromosomes that our body cells are having, the other cells are having. As in the human, the number of chromosomes we have is the 46. So if it was mitosis, not meiosis, then the sperms and ovums will also have 46 numbers of chromosomes. And when they form the zygote by fusing to each other, the zygote will have the number of chromosome 46 plus 46 equal to 92. So the chromosome number would have increased. To conserve the chromosome number, the meiosis comes in. And during the meiosis, the chromosome number reduces, the sperm having 23 and ovum also having 23, and conserving the number of chromosome to 46. Now let us see how the meiosis occurs, the steps of the meiosis and what happens during the meiosis. This is the parent cell or the epithelial cell which is ready to go through the meiosis cell division. So before the cell division, the chromosomes the, uh, the cell is having will duplicate itself or it will increase or double the, the genetic material inside it. That's why they are having two chromatids. So these two chromatids are the duplicate copies of the one chromosomes. So let's assume in this cell we have four chromosomes or this species is having four chromosomes or you can say the two pairs of chromosomes. As inside one cell we have a pair of chromosomes that means two chromosomes are having the same genes but coming from the different parents that is one coming from the father and the other coming from the mother and these pairs are called the homologous pairs and I am denoting the darker one is coming from father and the lighter one is coming from the mother. In the next step of meiosis, these homologous chromosomes will pair up to each other. So these homologous pairs will come closer to each other as the black ones are coming closer to each other and the green ones also coming closer to each other. So these are homologous pairs and the process by which they come the homologous pairs come close to each other is called synapsis and a complex or a protein complex which attaches these two is called the synaptonemal complex. So now the homologous pairs are close to each other. In the next step what will happen is the arms of the chromosomes of the homologous pairs will connect to each other. They will form a criss-cross pattern and this pattern looks like X structure and this structure is called the chiasmata. This is for, called, called the formation of the chiasmata. During this time, the chromatids breaks into segments and the segments of the non-sister chromatids are exchanged and this process is called the crossing over. The crossing over is the process of exchanging the chromatin materials between two non-sister chromatids in between the homologous pairs. 
So after the crossing over, both the pairs will have segments or the genetic materials of each other. So the darker chromosome will have some part of the lighter chromosome and the lighter pair will also have some parts of the darker chromosome. So after the crossing over, each chromosome will have some genetic material which came from the father side and some genetic material which came from the mother side. And the crossing over is complete. But the chiasmata is still present there. So now the chiasmata terminates slowly in the next process or in the next step. Now the two chromosomes are separated or the two homologous chromosomes are separated from each other as chiasmata is terminated. And the chromosomes having the both the genetic materials inside each of the chromosomes. Now in the next step what will happen is there are centrioles present in the both poles and they are formed in the time of interphase. Now the astral rays will come out from the centrioles and connect to each of the chromosomes from both sides and they connect to the region of the centromere. Now after connecting of the astral rays to the chromosomes at the centromere region, in the next step the astral rays will pull each of the chromosomes towards the opposite poles. Now the chromosomes are at the opposite poles and the homologous chromosomes or homologous pairs are separated and pulled towards the opposite poles. Now in the next step, the, it will form the two separate cells, the two separate cells from that one cell and these two cells will have the chromosome number, the half of the parent cells. So now they have the one of the pair of the homologous chromosomes. From the homologous pair, they will each of the cells will have one chromosome. Now let's know the name of the stages where these things occurs. Now the first stage we draw here is the leptotene. And in the next step is zygoteny where the pairing of the homologous chromosomes occurred or the synapses occurred. And in the pachyteny, the uh, significant thing is crossing over. And the next is diploteny where chiasmata is still present. And in the diakinesis, the chiasmata has ended or terminated. When the astral rays will connect to the chromosomes and pull them to the middle, middle line, it is the metaphase 1. Then pull towards the ends, it is the anaphase 1. And at the end, it is the telophase 1 when it forms two cells. And that from leptotene to diakinesis, all of this comes under the prophase 1. Now we have the two cells at the telophase 1, but they have the double genetic materials as they have two chromatids in each chromosomes. So we have to separate the chromatids. Now the meiosis 2 starts and the meiosis 2 will also have prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. And at the first stage of meiosis 2, we will see duplication of the centrioles and the centrioles will go to the opposite poles and will um, send out the astral rays towards the chromosomes. This is the prophase 2. Uh, this is the prophase 2 of the metaphase 2. So in the next stage, the astral rays will connect to the uh, chromosomes at the centromere region uh, of the both of the cells uh, coming from the telophase 1. And the astral rays will connect to the chromosomes and bring them to the middle line or the equator region. And this meiosis 2 is similar to the mitosis cell division. So you can go and check the mitosis cell division video that I have made. That will help you to understand it better. And this is the phase which is the metaphase 2. During this time the chromosomes are at the equator region of the cell. In the next step that is the anaphase 2, the astral rays will pull the chromosomes the chromatids towards the poles the chromatids uh, each chromatids of the chromosomes will break 
at the centromere region and the two chromatids will be separated from each other and will be pulled towards the poles of the cells now the chromatids are separated and are have reached the poles of the cells through the astral rays and this step is called the anaphase 2 and the movement is anaphasic movement and after the anaphase 2 comes the stage telophase 2 in this stage the chromatids have separated and reached at the different at the opposite poles and they will form separate cells now the first cell will divide into two cells having the separated chromatids and the second cell will also have two different cells having the separated chromatids so overall we will get total four cells from these two cells and the chromosomes all have the recombined and the combination of the father and mother genetic material and in this telophase two the um, nuclear envelope will also come over again and from the formation of the cell complete so this is the telophase two and the last stage of the meiosis now the four gametes are formed from one parent cell